the things that we also learned last week is powers. So we're also going to also include the powers in our communication and discussion. Um, when it comes to powers, only when it's in, it is multiplication and subtraction, um, multiplication and division, then we rely on the basis. If the basis are the same, you're either going to add or subtract the powers. If we're dealing with um, addition and subtraction, then we need to talk about like terms and the like terms are the things that looks exactly the same or similar to one another and therefore we can add the like terms together we can subtract the like terms together as well so let's look at this question number one it says simplify the following expression as far as possible so therefore it means simplify this until there is no way you are able to simplify it any further. And one thing for sure that I forgot to do is to record the session. Uh, and I see that uh, someone already started the recording on our behalf. Uh, I don't know who started the recording, but I hope it's Adele. If if it's any of the students who started the recording, please let me know because just let me know who started the recording because we will need to have access to that recording. Okay. <clears throat> Otherwise, let's continue. So, now, always when you solve expression, also remember the Bodmas rule. All right. Bodmas says brackets first before addition, subtraction, exponent, or powers and addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. That's what we need to do first. Then we do expressions and then we do um, division and multiplication. And always remember that division and multiplication have the same priority if they appear on the same equation or um, formula, we work from left to right. And also addition and subtraction have the same priority. We work from left to right. <coughs> so. Here yeah, we have 6a squared minus 9ab plus 2b squared minus 3 times ba minus b squared. <coughs> we first need to get rid of the bracket. So to get rid of the bracket, we are left with 6a squared minus 9ab plus 2b squared. And we're going to multiply with the negative sign that is in front or the minus that is in front of three. So we say minus three times three BA. We're going to also rearrange BA and start with A because letters of alphabet say A, B, C, D. So we just want to rearrange that as well as we work through. So this will be minus three times BA will be minus three AB. I'm just rearranging BA by writing a first. Next, we need to multiply by minus 3 into minus b squared. So minus 3 times minus b squared, negative times negative becomes positive, and the answer will be 3b squared. Now, we need to look for like terms. In terms of this, 6a, a squared, it's on its own, 6a squared. I'm just going to rearrange the, um, this so that I put the like terms together. And then we have minus 9ab and we have minus 3ab so that I bring the like terms together. You don't have to do this step. Uh, save time in the exam. I'm just showing you some of the ways that you can do to identify things quickly. 
B squared plus 3B squared, or you can also just highlight them and enter, and enter the question. So this will be 6A squared minus 9AB minus 3AB because they are the same. We can add or subtract. So minus 9 minus 3, it's minus 12AB and plus 2B squared plus 3B squared, they are like terms. So plus 2 plus 3 is plus 5B squared. And the answer is option number 2. Answer will be option number two. And that's how you're going to answer questions when they give you expressions and ask you to simplify them to their simplest form. Let's look at another expression, unless if you have any question. Uh, remember also, the sessions are interactive. It's not going to be me only talking. At some point, you will have to unmute and talk to me, right? And if you have any question while I'm explaining things and you're getting lost, just unmute and let me know and ask your question so that then we don't leave anyone behind. Okay, so let's look at exercise two. <clears throat> Simplify the following expression as far as possible. So here as well, we are given an expression of four times the root of 64 squared, uh, 64 X to the power of 16. <clears throat> now, the other thing you need to also remember when it comes to the roots or the squares and all that, you can also uh, simplify by uh, changing the root to a power. So what do we mean by that? We know that a root, which is also the same as the square root. So a root without a number in front is the same as the square root. Right. If the square root is written like this, we can also write the square root as a power. So we know that the caravan is the same as one over, that's the caravan, and the number in front of the caravan is what goes in the fraction. And this, we can write it as the, the power. So uh, because I ran out of space there, the square root is the same as a number to the power of, sorry, I wrote it wrong actually as well, Right there, it should be two. <coughs> the square root can be written as a, the value to the power of a half. So if let's say here it was an a, therefore it will be a to the power of a half. So if it was the cube, uh, quadro root of b, we can write this as b to the power of one over four. What happens when it is the cube quadro root, I'm going to use quadro root of b to the power of a half. You also still need to say this will be one, oh, oh, sorry, because our b is to the power of a half. And you sorry about my flicking uh, chart to the power of one over four. That's all what you need to always remember. A cube root, a square root, a quadro root, or whatever root that you will have, you can always refer to as the power of that root of a, of a fraction. <clears throat> so coming back to our, to our equation here, now we can also break this equation to make it easy for us to understand and unpack it into different parts. So we're going to say four multiply by the root of 64. I'm going to break everything that is underneath the root 
into different parts because a, a square root of, of a number, we can find it using a calculator. <clears throat> and the next one will be the root of x to the power of 16. Now, because I've, I have three different equations, I can gen, then just say 4 multiply by what is the square root of 64? What will be that number that when we multiply that number by itself two times, it will give us 64 and that number is 8. 8. Yes. And multiply by, and this we can change it to x to the power of 16 to the power of 1 over 2. Now, because we have x to the power of 16, times the power of a half, we can take 16 multiplied by 1 over 2, right? 2 goes 1 time into 2, and it goes 8 times into 16. 8 times, <coughs> 8 times 1 is 8 over 1, which is the same as 8. That's one way of answering the question as well. So we can simplify it that way. So that will be 4 times 8. It's how much? 32. It's 32. And x to the power, and we said everything at the power, we solved it. It's x to the power eight. of 8. And the answer is option number 2. Let's see if you are able to answer this question. So here is your question. Question three. I'll give you three minutes.
Are we winning? Yes, ma'am. I put my answer in the chat. I see that. Others, are we winning? Are we getting there? Or are we lost? They say, ask and it shall be given. So if you are stuck and you don't know how to answer it, please ask. Ask for help. Okay, so let's see how we answer it. <clears throat> now it's your chance to speak so that I can be quiet. I see that they are. Please don't forget to complete the register. Oh, I see. Um, Adele says you must also put your student number on the chat. I th think for those who are unable to see the chat, then it might be a little bit difficult. Okay. Okay, so who wants to do this? Anyone? Okay, ma'am, I will go. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what I did was I took the what is in the brackets first, and obviously because it's to the power of two, I then said um the p to the power of two then becomes p uh, um to the power of eight, and then I took the one over three and I just put it to the bot like um said so I said six times one over three p to the power of eight gives me eight um two two p eight. But I also looked at it again and I also saw if I take what's in the bracket, like the one over three, and I also times that by two, like if I take the whole the whole number that's in the bracket and I times that by two, it still gives me, um, a, a, like for example, it will still give me the same answer because it's the same, it's the same principle that's being applied. Okay. <clears throat> so let's do it step by step so that we don't get confused. So we first need to get the bracket, remember? Odd mass is our friend. Brackets first. So brackets, there's nothing we can do with the brackets because there is nothing inside the bracket that we need to work with. The next one is exponents or powers, which is represented by O, which is the next thing. So the next thing is for us to simplify the, exp the exponents. So to do that, we say 6 multiply by, and we're going to distribute 2 into the whole bracket. 3 to the power of 2 multiply by p to the power of 4 times 2, which is to the power of 2. And <clears throat> what do we have now? You also need to go back to the powers and understand the principles of the powers. So we say... In terms of the powers, if I have x to the power, oh, x over y to the power of n is the same as x to the power of n divided by y to the power of n. You can distribute that power into all the values that you have in your bracket, in, uh, in your fraction, right? So we can do the same. So <clears throat> one over 3 to the power of 2, we can write it as 6 times 1 squared divided by 3 squared, multiply by, and I can already solve this side, it's p to the power of 8. 
Now we are left with six times what is one squared is one over three squared. What is three squared? Three squared is three times three, which is equals to nine <coughs> times p to the power of eight. Now, six times one, or we can simplify. Remember, this are fraction multiplying. So we can also do the following. <clears throat> we can treat six over one times one over nine by saying what are the what is the number that can divide into six and three or simplify into six and three? That is a three, right? Three goes into six two times and it goes into nine three times. And the answer here will be two times one will give us two, one times three will give us three. And therefore, the answer for this question will be two over three p to the power of eight, which is option number one. <clears throat> And that's how you're going to simplify expressions to their simplest form. <coughs> Are there any questions? If there are no questions, then now let's move no, uh, into. Um, sorry, Elizabeth. Yes. Uh, uh, for myself, like, uh, I don't know if it's going to cause a confusion for me when I'm busy with the exams, because what I what I normally do is I would simplify it using this uh, second step and then uh, I'll just calculate the numbers with the calculator. And yeah, I know the, it's fine. If you're using a calculator, you can use your num the numbers. You can use your calculator. You don't have to do it manually. So. Okay. <clears throat> You can take your calculator and calculate six times one over three to the power of two. It will give you the answer. Okay. I'm doing it manually because I don't have my I don't have a calculator in front of me and we're not working with big numbers that will require me to use a calculator. But yeah, in the exam, go ahead, use a calculator. So now we're not dealing with Fractions, we go into equations. Now, to solve equation, the purpose of solving equation is to find an unknown number. <clears throat> is to find an unknown number, possibly. So, for example, if you're given an equation with only one variable, uh, which means the number we don't know because it's a placeholder. It's an, a number that we all don't know what that number is unless we calculate that number. And the simplest way of it is to solve that equation to find the missing number. So when you solve equations, I've already in the beginning when we started, I've told you, Whatever you do on the left, you must do on the right. Whatever you do on the right, you must do on the left. Or when you move things across the equal sign, the sign will change. If it was minus, it will be plus. If it was plus, it becomes minus. If it's dividing, you multiply. If it's multiplying, you divide to get rid of that number. Those are the principles that you always need to remember when solving equations. Not also forgetting. The board mass brackets before exponents and exp uh, um, expressions, uh, division, multiplication. They've got the same priority. We're working from left to right, but they have priority over addition and subtraction. And addition and subtraction have the same priority. We also work from left to right, regardless of the equation that we have. So. <clears throat> 
when we have equations like this, we need to distribute the value outside of the brackets because if x plus 1, x we don't know what it is, we cannot add it to 1. The same way as x minus 2, we cannot add it x minus 2, we cannot subtract them to one another because we don't know what x is. So we can't solve the bracket, but we can distribute to remove the bracket. So we distribute 3 into the bracket in order for us to remove that bracket. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times positive 1, it's plus 3, plus 4 is equal to 5. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Minus 3 times minus 2, it's positive 6. Like terms together. When it's an equality sign, it doesn't matter whether you leave things on the right, left, sorry, <clears throat> whether you leave things on the left or you move them over to the right. But I always prefer things to move to the left. So let's move everything that has an x to the left and everything that does not have an x to the right. So 3x, 3x on this side, it's minus 3x. When it comes this side, it will be plus 3x is equals to 5 plus 6. And we move 3 and 4 to the other side. They are both minus. So we can say minus 3 minus 4. And you could have already simplified them here by saying 3 plus 4 is 7 and move only minus 7 to the other side. The same way, 5 plus 6 is 11. You could just write the answer there. But I just like to complicate my life, so I'm going to put it this way. 3x plus 3x is 6x. 5 plus 6 is 11. Minus 3 is 9. Mm. 11 minus 3 is 8 minus 4. Do I know that it's 4? And we just need to only be left with x on this side. So therefore, we're going to divide this side by 6 and divide this side by 6. 6 and 6 cancel out. And you will be left with 4 over 6 on the other side, but there is a number that can go into 4 and also into 6. So 2 goes 2 times into 4 and it goes 3 times into 6. And the answer will be 2 over 3, which is option 2. <coughs> easy, right? Easy, straightforward, easy peasy. What happens when you get equations that looks like this, that looks so as if like they are so confusing and they are not. As long as you remember the principle, if it's dividing, you need to multiply everything by that number. Whatever you do on the left, you must also do on the right. Now, the challenge here is you have... <coughs> 2x over 5 minus x over 3 is equal to 1 over 2. You cannot do the subtraction here, or you can. It's up to you how there are many ways you can solve this. You can treat this as a fraction and solve this fraction on the left. And once you have the answer for this fraction on the left, then you can simplify and find the x value. So let's do that. We're going to do this two times, two ways. Let's see if we get the same answer doing it two ways. So the first way is we treat this as a fraction. So we're going to solve 2x over 5 minus x over 3 on the left. We're only going to treat the left hand side first. So 2x over 5 minus x over 3. Now I need to find the common denominator. Remember, it's addition and subtraction. We need to find the common denominator. <laughs> and the common denominator here is 15. 5 goes how many times into 15? It goes 5, 10, 15, 3 times. 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6x. 
uh, minus. 3 goes how many times into 15? It goes 5 times. 5, five times, times x, x is, five is 5 x. And now, what do we have? We will have 6 x minus 5. It will be x. x over 15. Now, this is our left hand side. So if our left hand side is x over 15 equals to a half, then let's get rid of 15. We multiply the side by 15, multiply the side by 15, and therefore we will get 15 and 15 cancel out. You get x is equals to 15 over 2. Remember, a fraction to simplify it to the lowest form until it no longer be, can be simplified is to convert a improper fraction to a mixed fraction. So 2 goes how many times into 15? It goes 2, 4 until you get to 7. So it goes 7 times and the remainder will be 1 over 2. And the answer is option 1. That's the first, the other way of doing this. <clears throat> Right. The other way of doing this is we have 2x over 5 minus x over 3. So I'm going to call this option 1. And this is option 2 of answering the same question. Right. x over 3 is equals to 1 over 2. Now, because 2 over 5 is... Uh, is on the first one, what we need to do in order to get rid of 2 over 5, we're going to multiply by 2 by the inverse of 2 over 5 on across. So it means we're going to say 5 over 2 multiply by 2 over 5x minus, we also need to do it there. So 5 over 2 times x over 3 equals. 1 over 2 times 5 over 2. So, because we want to get rid of the first 2 over 5, so that we are left with x. So, that and that will cancel out. You will be left with x minus, and at the top here, we will have 5x over 6 is equals to 5 over 4. Right, because it's one times two, uh, one times five, and two times two is four. Now, <clears throat> the next is to get rid of um, uh, the five over x. Now, because in order for us to get rid of this, it means we're going to multiply. It's going to be a non-everlasting cycle of getting this multiplied by that, multiplied by that again, and all that. So we need to do that. So in order for us to get rid of 5 over x, we can treat this as a fraction because they are like terms, right? Because 5 minus 5x is a like term. So yeah, the common denominator is 6 because this is the same as x over 1. So this will be 6x minus 5x. And therefore, you will be left with x over 6, 5 over 4. And we get rid of 6 by multiplying by 6 this side, multiply by 6 that side. And that will give us 6 and 6 will cancel out. You will be left with x. 4 goes 2 times into 4. Uh, 2 goes 2 times into 4, and it goes 3 times into 3. And your 5 times 3 is 15 over 2, which is the same as 7, 1 over 2. You can go the complex route or the simple route. It's up to you. What the fact remains is, uh, the fact remains that, you need to apply your mind when you solve equations. You need to think about everything you know with regards to fraction, with regards to powers, with regards to board mass, with regards to expressions and all that. You bring it and you answer your equations.
Hmm. The other way of answering equation is to making something a subject of the formula. And here it is when Here it is when you have multiple variables or multiple unknown placeholders in your equation or your expression, and we need to change the subject of the formula. So the subject of the formula, for example, with the exercises that we were doing, our subject of the formula here is X. When a variable is on its own, on the left-hand side, we call that a subject of that formula or expression that it's on the right. So <clears throat> in order for us to change the subject of the formula, the same principle happens. Whatever you do on the right, you do on the left, left, right. If you move things across, if it's dividing, you multiply. If it's multiplying, you divide. If it's a plus, it becomes subtraction. If it's a subtracting, it becomes an addition. Those are the same principle, nothing changes so going for if we need to solve this formula if s is equals to p times one plus rt which is your simple interest formula for future value future value of a simple interest make r the subject of the formula and therefore it means here they are asking you to make the rate the subject of the formula. We want to calculate what the rate is, what the interest rate is, the simple interest rate would be. So in order for us to calculate that, you can see that R is inside the bracket and in the bracket, R is multiplying with a T. So in order for us to make R the subject of the formula, we need to remove certain things. So let's go. S is equals to P times one plus RT. The first thing that we need to get rid of is the P. So we divide the side by P, therefore it means we divide the side by P. P and P cancels out. Then you are left with one plus RT. On there, right hand side. This left hand side is over P. Now we need to get rid of one to the other side as well. This side we will be left with RT and when we move one to this side, it's S over P minus one. We can also change the equation. Let's rewrite it because it's an equal sign. So therefore it says the right is the same as the left. So we can also say RT is equals to S over P minus one. It will be the same thing because it's whether we write it on the left or on the right, <laughs> they will still balance. Okay, so now we can solve for R. So solving for R, we need to get rid of T. Therefore, it means we divide by T on one side, we divide by T on the other side. And T and T will cancel out. You are left with R. And this will be S over P minus one over T. Now, <clears throat> looking at this, you might think, oh yeah, there is no answer here. How did she do it? <clears throat> right? So we can treat this S over P minus one divide by <coughs> <laughs> divide by one, divide by T. You can rewrite it because this is a division, all right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is a division. So a division, we can write this as S over P minus one. And I'm going to put it in the bracket and I'm going to put the divide by. <clears throat> Remember, now this is divide by T, right? What do we remember about uh, <clears throat> fractions? Because if I convert this to a fraction, then I can keep the first, right? S over P minus one, and I can multiply 
and we change this to one over T. Right? That's what we can do. We can keep flip. So when we flip, it becomes one over T and we can then cross multiply with a T across because it's multiplying. So T will multiply with P, then you will have S over T minus one times one is one divided by, because this is the same as one divided by one will be over T. And the answer will be option number four. So you need to apply your mind. I know that it's very confusing. But you need to think outside of the box sometimes when you solve equations, especially <clears throat> when it comes to an equation like this, where you need to make something the subject of the formula as well. And looking at the options, you need to apply your mind to say, am I at the end? If not, if there is no answer on there, it, it might be that you did the calculation, but you did them wrong and you might find the answer. It doesn't mean that it's correct, right? But <laughs> you need to think when you get to answers like this, because we could have stopped at that point, at this point, and looked for the answer here and would have panicked and said, but there is no answer. And usually, Sometimes in some exam papers, they have option number five and they call it none of the above. And you might think that that is the answer and it's not because the answer is on there. You just needed to do a little bit of calculations as well or manipulations as well. <laughs> While we're still talking about expression and equations, Sometimes you might be given a sentence and you are asked to take a paragraph or a sentence and convert it into a mathematical expression. So you need to also know those. Don't lose marks because it might be that you are losing four marks out of this. And this is the easiest question that you can have, right? So don't lose marks by just not knowing how to answer questions like this. A father is three years older than five times the son's age. The father <clears throat> is three years older than five times the son's age. <clears throat> Suppose the father is X old, give an expression in X for the son's age. And I said, these things are very easy to answer. Not necessarily, <clears throat> especially when it comes to literal equations like this. That's why you need to think long and hard on this type of questions because they can be as tricky as they are. <laughs> so if we know that the father is X, the father's age is X, right? But we also know that <clears throat> the father is three years older than five times his son's age. So. If the father's age is X, therefore the father will be five times older than the son, but will be three years older. Therefore, it means when it comes to the son, or oh, not five, three, the, the son will be three years younger. So because the son is three years younger, it, the, the age will have to also be subtracted from the father's age. So the son is three years younger. So if the father's age is X, the son will be three years younger because the father is three years older than five times. 
the father's age. Ma'am, if mm -hmm. you talk, oh, are you quiet, ma'am? Because, because I'm not I hearing quiet. anything. <laughs> I'm quiet because this is tricking me. It's it, it's tricking me. <laughs> <laughs> The father is five times. <clears throat> five times the son's age. So <clears throat> if our if the son's age is five, right? Five times the son's age, but the father is three years older than five times the son's age. So let's assume that the son's age is Y. So the father will be three times that number. But we also know that he is older. I'm going to put the three, right? <clears throat> and if this is, if this is the father, the father's age, right? <clears throat> So when we want to <clears throat> find the son's age, because that's what we want to find the son's age, but in relation to X, right? So it means we need to solve for Y. So solving for Y, we need to take 3X will minus 3 onto the other side, which is correct as I did it. But then we need to divide by 5. So we'll need to divide by five. So we're not going to multiply by five because if we multiply this, we multiply in the father's age. <clears throat> that will be multiplied by five. So that is, yes, that's how you will answer it. So you need to go back and think about it. Because here it says the father is three years older than five times the son's age. So we don't know what the son's age is. I'm just going to put the son's age as Y. So five times the son's age, that's the father, but and also the, he is three years older, five times the son. So plus three. Suppose the father is X. So here is the father's age. The father's age is equals to five times the son's age plus three years because he's old, three years older than the son. Unless, yes, yes, it's still, it's still right. <clears throat> so to find the, to find the sun, we need to solve for y. So we'll move three to the other side, that will mean X minus three, therefore the son will be five times, the son will be three years older than the father, but we also need just the son's age. So we need to get rid of the five and get rid of the five, it means we divide by five. So probably the answer is option, option four. At some point, I, I also thought that it, it might be option two. It might be that I'm doing this wrong. If it can be option four, if the following scenario happens, this becomes five times y plus three. Then it will be option two, because then we're saying it's five times 
the sun's age plus three, whichever one. And therefore it will be uh, x divided by five, and you will be left with y plus three on the other side, therefore it will be what? minus three is equals to y. That will be the answer, which will mean that option two is correct, not option four. But that is how you will read the questions. I don't know how to answer this one. It might be me <coughs> confused, but yeah. That's how you will answer uh, weighted questions. Now let's go back to another question. Sorry, there are no other expression questions. So those are ratios and the linear equations. We're not touching that. And yeah, let's find more exercises so that you are able to do a lot of exercises. So this exam paper doesn't look good at all. It's very blurry. Okay, so here is your question. A mother divides an amount of money amongst her children, Gahisa, Digeledi, and Tabo. Gahiso is, or is it Gahiso or Gahisa now? Gahiso gets twice as much as his sister, Digeledi. Digeledi gets 100 rand less than Tabo. Suppose <laughs> Tabo gets X rent. How much does Kahiso get in terms of X? That's your exercise. Let's see if you are able to get that. I'm going to give you five minutes to deal with that. And I will catch up. And then we will do it together. Are we winning?
ma'am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm confused, but I think um, according to like maybe how we worked at the previous one, that it could be option two. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Because, yeah, yeah. That is what I'm kind of getting. Let's read the question and then see if we are able to make sense of it. So we know that the money is divided up among the three children, you know? and Kahiso gets twice as much as Tigelet. So there is Kahiso, he gets twice as much as Tigelet, right? And we know that Tigelet, who is our D, gets 100 rand less than Tabo. There is Tabo minus 100. We are also told that Tabo, let Tabo become X. So we're going to change Tabo to X minus 100, right? What we want to know is, or what they want to know is, how much does, we're going to convert it back to D. D is equals to X minus 100. How much is Kahiso get in terms of <clears throat> Um, X. Now, Kahiso gets twice as much as Digelate. So, therefore, Kahiso will get two times Digelate, which is D is X minus 100. And there is your answer. Yes, man. That was my first answer. And then I felt very confused because then I thought, like, is that going to be right? Because then it's like, um, shouldn't we do it the same way we did the other one? But now I know I should just go with my understanding and not doubt myself. Yeah. Sometimes it's easy when you read the question and put and write out the fact that are given in terms of how you understand the question is being asked. It makes it easier to understand it. With this, with this one, the thing that made the question more tricky is the mention of three years older and five times. Oh, where are we now? Uh, three years older than five times the age of the sun and they say the sun's age but they say represented in terms of the father's age of x right so it makes it a little bit difficult or really um we we could have already also said if the father's age is x so we'll know that y will be uh, maybe we, 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 we need to relook at this as well. Y, which is the sun's age, will be X plus 3. But now, because we know that it's not going to be, because we know that the sun's age is X plus 3, then, or maybe we need to use father. Three, year, three years older, or three years older than five times, then we can put the five in front or something like that, which makes it a little bit difficult to understand, right? Than with the first one, with the second one that we do. Because, yeah, the second one, it's straightforward. They tell you that Kahiso gets twice as much as Digelady. We are able to write it out as an equation. Digelady gets less than Tabo. We are able to write there what Digelady gets because it gets less than what Tabo gets. Um, and <clears throat> we are also told that Tabo is X. So we can replace Tabo with X on this equation and then substitute back Digelady's amount onto Kahiso because then we know that Kahiso gets twice as much as Digelady and Digelady gets less than what Tabo gets, which is that equation, which is easy. So I hope in the exam they give you questions like this, which are straightforward. Okay. <laughs> okay, next... too, ma'am. Your next exercise, simplify the expression as far as possible.
This is x times x minus 2 minus 2 times 1 minus x squared times x times x minus 4x. Now, sometimes you get confused when you have an x after the bracket. What I can suggest you do is take the x and multiply it with the 2 first. So that will be x times x minus 2 minus 2x times 1 minus x squared minus 4x. And then it will be easy for you to solve the equation. That's your chance to do that. And then we can talk about the answer. Are we winning? <clears throat> yes, ma'am.
Are we done? <clears throat> Hello, are you guys there? Yes, okay, so let's answer the question. Let's distribute. Anyone? No one. Sorry, ma'am, I'm here. <laughs> um, okay, so it's 2x minus x minus 2x plus. Oh, where? sorry, ma'am. <laughs> okay, I don't know where you are at right now. Um, let's distribute okay. the x into the bracket, the first yes. one. Yes, so it's, so it's x squared mm -hmm. minus 2x. And then minus 2x plus x 2x cube minus 4x. And then um, if we take it according to putting it in order, like mathematical order, then it will be, the, we'll take the 2x cubed. And then we'll add all the, like there's only one x squared, so it will be plus x squared. And then we'll take all the other terms, which is like terms, which is the minus 2, minus 2, so it's minus 2x, minus 2x, minus 4x, which gives us minus 8x. No, ma'am, not that, yes. So the option one is the answer. Thank you. Your next question.
Are we done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can I go yeah. in, ma'am? <laughs> yes, you can. Okay, so according to my understanding of the law of exponents, um, when it comes to square roots, you divide whatever is whatever the power is, for example, like b to the power of eight will become b to the power of four times by b to the power of eight. And b and b is stays b. And then you add the exponents, which will be 12. So B12, so that will be option three. Yes, you can do that. You can also, because it's multiplication, you can also just multiply both of them. So it's B to the power of eight times B to the power of 16. And because They've got the same powers. You can just add. Sorry, they've got the same basis. You can add the powers. So that will be 24. And we can take b e to the power of 24 to the power of a half, which 2 goes 1 time and it goes 12 times, and b is to the power of 12, which is the same. Or we could have already from here said b to the power of 8 to the power of a half times b to the power of 16 to the power of a half and we could have solved this 2 goes 1 time into 2 and it goes 4 times into 8 times B goes 8 times into 16, and therefore it will be B to the power 4 plus 8, which is equals to B to the power of 12. Whichever way you feel comfortable using the, or solving the expressions and equations, use that. So there are many ways you can answer the same question. The fact is, in all those many ways, you still need to get to the same answer. Your next exercise. Are we winning? Are we there?
I can't believe that out of all the people, I only communicate with one person. Oh, guys, that's not fair. Are you guys here? Yes, we're here. Oh, at least because it might be that um, you connected, but you are not here with us. You left the session. You are somewhere in the kitchen or somewhere watching TV. And I'm just here alone with Michelle. <laughs> there. Let's answer this question. Are you done? Ma'am, I'm not done. I'm lost, so I need help. <laughs> OK, so. It's almost similar to the one that we did previously. Remember, you need to first distribute the power of three into the whole uh, bracket first, because we have half a to the power of two, b to the power of three. So we're just going to say two times one over two to the power of three by just distributing the three. A. Oh, times I can put there multiply by a to the power of two to the power of three times b to the power of three to the power of three. And we can solve this by saying two times uh, one cubed is one. What is two to the power of three? It's eight because it's eight. two oh, times two three times two times two. Times two. It's okay. eight times a to the power two times three is six, and times b three times three is nine. Therefore, two goes one time into two, and it goes four times into eight. One times one is one. One times four is four a to the power of 6, b to the power of i, which is option 2. Easy, right? Solve the following equation. It means make A the subject of the formula. When you are done, please let me know when you are done. So I don't have to ask you, are you done? I just want to hear how many people are done. I'm done. Okay. I'll wait to hear a couple of more people. Done, ma'am. No, okay. Others, you can also type in the chat. Yeah. Oh, okay. So at least four people then for it means a lot of you are done. Okay, who wants to try it? Okay, yeah, I'll try. Yeah. Okay, uh first of all I simply um how do I say this? I took uh what is on the left and I 
I mean, what is on the right to 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 the left? But I first uh, um, simplify the brackets on my okay. right. Okay, let's simplify the bracket. Okay, so the two times uh, three is uh, six. Okay. And then uh, two times negative uh, five A is minus 10 A. And then this will remain as is, okay? And then? Yes. And then I, the minus four A, and then I took the 10 A, and then it's gonna be a positive plus 10 A. And then it will be equal to six minus seven. And then I have six A on my left. And then I have one. So I will divide by six to two. two. So it's minus one because it will take the sign yeah. of a bigger number, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So divide by six, divide by six, six and so six eight. cancel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, number number four. It will be nice. Hey. Yes, girl. <laughs> uh, your next solve the following equation. Five over nine x plus one over three is equals to five over six x. Same, right? When you are done, let me know.
Ma'am, I'm struggling with this one. <clears throat> okay, so others, I see you are all quiet as well. So let's get you unstuck so that we we only left with 10 minutes before the end of the session. Okay, so this um you have X on the other on the left, X on the right, so we put the light terms together. So five over nine X minus five over six X and we take the one without an X to the left, which will be minus one over three. What follows? <clears throat> we can solve the fraction. What is the common denominator between nine and six? Three. Mm -mm. Three. Nine cannot divide into three. It's 18, right? Eight, nine can go into 18 and six can go into 18, right? So the common denominator will be 18. Nine goes how many times into 18? It goes two times. Because 9 plus 9 is 18. 2 times 5, it's 10x. 6 goes how many times into 18? 6, 12, 18, 3 times. 3 times 5, it's 15x. Is equals to minus 1 over 3. Solve the top part. 10x minus 15, it's minus 5 x over 18 is equals to minus 1 over 3. <clears throat> Did you at least get to that stage? <laughs> now we need to get rid of minus 5 over 18 by multiplying by minus 18 over 5. On that side, we also need to multiply by minus 18 over 5 on the other side. That will cancel out. You will be left with x is equals to, and we can solve the fraction. What is the common denominator between five and and three? It's fifteen. Three. Oh, actually, we don't even have to find the common denominator because it's multiplication, right? This is multiplication. We can simplify. Three goes how many times into three? It goes one time. It goes how many times into 18? Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, six times. It goes six times. Negative times negative is positive. Therefore, the answer here will be six over five. And the because this is an improper fraction. Five goes how many times into six? It goes one time. The remainder will be one over five. And the answer is option one. <clears throat> and that is how you will solve equation. I will do this one for you. You don't have to do anything. Simplify the following expression as far as possible. Uh, this expression, actually, uh, the thing here is missing is the division. It's a division. So, solving this equation, I'm hoping that it's a division because if it's a subtraction, they need something else. Let's start with it as a as a minus. Let's not convert it to a fraction and see if it works out. So we need to do what is inside the brackets first. So we have 18x squared divided by 4y. And here at the top will be minus. 3x times 8. What is 3 times 8? It's 24, right? 24x over 4 times 9. 
36. Y. And we need to find the common denominator between 36 and It will be a very big number. And I I thought it, it cannot be. <clears throat> what will be that number that both of those two numbers can divide into and not leave a reminder? 36 it's times. Self. It's 36. how much? Is it 36? So 34 yes. can go into 36, 36 nine, nine times. times. Yes, ma'am. So that will be 36, 36y, that will be the common denominator. 4 goes how many times into 36? It goes 9 times. 9 times. 9 times 18x squared. So 9 times 18. It's 162. Yeah. X squared. Minus 36 goes one time into 36. So, yeah. So, so that will be minus 24x. And by the look at things, this is how far it gets. There is nothing you can do about it. There is nothing you can. Uh, uh, so it must be divided by probably. Um, yeah, so that is not the, the subtraction, it is a division. Okay, <clears throat> so if that is a division, then uh, we will have 18x squared over 4y divided oh. by, uh, what did we say this was, 24x 24x over 36y. 36y. Now keep, change, flip, right? Yes. 18x squared over 4y. Change the sign to a multiplication. Flip the numerator and the denominator. And now we can simplify. So, uh, what are the numbers that can divide into each one of them? So, uh, can 6 go into 18 and can it go into 24? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and okay, so 6 goes into 18 three times, right? And it goes into 24 four times. Do I have it right? Yes, and is there a number that can go into 36 and also go into 4? Um, so 4 can go, can 4 divide into 36? Yes, it goes yes, nine, 9 times. times. So four goes one time into, and it goes nine time, and y and y cancels out. <clears throat> uh, what also we didn't cancel out because it's x squared. So here the x will cancel the one x there. We will be left with only one of them. It's the same thing as x squared divide by x. Because it's division, we say x2 minus 1 because there is the power of 1, which is the same thing that we have there. And therefore, the answer will be x to the power no, x to the power of 1, which is the same as x. So here we will be left with only x. So <clears throat> 3 times 9, what is 3 times 9? Or is there any other number that can divide into those? Nope. 3 times 9 is? 27. 27x 27 and oh, 1 times oh. 4 is 4. And the answer is option 2. Number two. 
<clears throat> and that concludes our session for today. So you can go and do additional other exercises. So please, you can see that the majority of your first questions are more about expression and equations and all that. You cannot lose out on this max. They are very important. So eight questions already in one exam paper includes expression and equation. <clears throat> so you cannot. Uh, others we dealt with. So also practice uh, questions like this, changing the subject of the formulas and all that. Uh, <clears throat> on the previous other um papers, uh, you can see that question one is about the expression, so you just need to make sure that you know how to solve them. Um, about the expression, about powers and expression, so you cannot miss out on this marks. Um, and that is another expression, and especially those ones where <clears throat> they are written in words, so you can see that uh, this we will do next week. Next week we'll do um, areas. So please go and practice <laughs> on this other question paper. They do have a couple of them. Um, those who attended the session last week have access to this three past exam paper that I shared with you. Otherwise, um, I will see you next week. Are there any questions, comments, theories? Before we close of the session. Any comments, questions? If there are no comments or questions, Then I will see you next week, same, same place, same time, when we deal with measurements. Those who are doing QMI, I will see you later today when we deal with questions relating to data handling uh, at 12 o'clock. Other than that, have a lovely Saturday and a weekend. Enjoy yourself. See you next week. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.